According to the US Department of Transportation, 276 million vehicles are registered in the USA. That means 91% of households have access to a vehicle. This is largely attributed to the fact that 50% of the population live in low-density suburban neighborhoods and therefore depend on a vehicle to be able to get around. American suburbia has grown exponentially since the post-war era, which was meant to alleviate the housing crisis at the time. New building techniques made it fast and cheap to make mass-produced homes. By the 1950s, the landscape of America had changed drastically, from people working in industrial cities and then being able to afford what looked like a luxurious life in the suburbs. These suburban designs have not changed much over the last decades, due to strict zoning laws which encouraged developers to leave out sidewalks, making these neighborhoods even more car dependent. The result is suburban sprawl, which have houses all equally spaced apart with large green open spaces to give the illusion of country living. These green spaces often consist of monocultures of lawns, which cover over 50 million acres in the USA. These lawns also come with ordinances that force the homeowner to regularly cut their lawns and refusal to do so can result in receiving a penalty. Keeping the lawn neat and tidy is a huge industry. In 2020, Americans spent a staggering $105 billion on lawn care alone. But what's even more shocking is how the lawn has created biological desert zones. A study of residential lawns at the National Science Foundation found that lawn maintenance is contributing to a continental scale ecological homogenization. According to a UN report, one million species on the planet face extinction and humans will suffer as a result. However, several states in the USA are making an effort to turn this around, starting in the gardens of American citizens. In this video, we are going to show you how and why the American suburbs are bringing back biodiversity to their neighborhoods to help save the planet. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. Planet Earth is a complex place full of biodiversity. Biodiversity basically encompasses every living thing on planet Earth. The current rate of global diversity loss is happening faster than at any other time in human history and it is expected to still grow in the up and coming years. These rapidly rising extinction trends impact numerous animal groups, having prompted scientists to declare a contemporary biodiversity crisis. When biodiversity is lost, there is a direct impact on human health. Loss in biodiversity means food supplies are more vulnerable to pest and disease, and where fresh water is an irregular or short supply. As human populations increase, and our need for housing and facilities directly impact our local wildlife habitats by building new developments on them. We take away the native plants which insects, birds and other species depend upon and replace it with concrete, homes and lawns. As a result, biodiversity in these areas begins to decline rapidly. Doug Tallamy, an entomologist at the University of Delaware and author of Nature's Best Hope, a new approach to conservation that starts in your yard, says that invasive plants are ecologically castrating the land around us. Native plants, on the other hand, often have deep root structures, making them good for storing water or providing drainage. They have also co-evolved for local conditions, and many insects only eat one native plant species or a group of related plants. So if we are planting non-native plants, that food doesn't necessarily transfer from creature to creature, and the ecosystem can stall. Doug Tallamy's work on garden ecosystem restoration has revealed a lot when comparing native against non-native. For example, the native oak tree, which comes in 91 native species. It grows almost everywhere in the United States and attracts caterpillars, a key species for supporting other wildlife. An oak tree will host around 534 species of caterpillars, compared to a non-native ginkgo tree which only supports one species of caterpillar. Caterpillars are an essential food for raising baby birds. Talimi says, Robins need between 6,000 to 9,000 caterpillars in just 16 days to feed their young. 
Doug Tallamy's research has inspired many people across the United States to turn their yards into diverse ecosystems filled with native plants to help increase biodiversity. But for those living in deserts such as Las Vegas, it has now become illegal to have a lawn altogether. The state has mandated the removal of all lawn turf. The lawn is considered non-functional and a drain on water resources. Las Vegas's water supply is sourced 90% from the Colorado River, which serves six other states. Its reserves are dwindling rapidly. And the Water Authority says that grass removal under the law could save up to 9.5 billion gallons of water annually. These and other efforts have helped to cut per person water consumption by half since the drought began in the 2000s. However, due to the current rising population growth in the region, the current daily water consumption has remained largely flat for much of the decade, and it is forecast that the growth in the Sunbelt region is set to continue. California is considered one of the world's 36 biodiversity hotspots on planet Earth because of its high concentration of unique species that are also experiencing unprecedented threats. In 2020, the California governor Gavin Newsom called for the conservation of 30% of the state's lands and waters by 2030 to protect the unique species and preserve ecosystems. However, California is said to have a severe housing shortage. A recent state assessment called for more than a million new units in Southern California to meet demand. Developers are planning new suburban towns with low to no maintenance yards and full of electric cars outside LA. If the USA wants to meet their targets to conserve 30% of their land and water by 2030 whilst meeting this housing demand, then a more holistic approach to development needs to be achieved. The future of housing developments desperately needs a permaculture perspective. Permaculture is an approach to land management and settlement design that adopts arrangements observed in flourishing natural ecosystems. It includes a set of design principles derived from using whole system thinking approach. As populations continue to rise, and in turn our demand for housing increases, it is essential that we create communities that work in harmony and protect the local environment. Andrew Minson is a permaculture design professor at the Oregon State University. He also makes YouTube videos and free resources on how to design a permaculture neighborhood. He shows how we can design our future suburbs and homes to include wildfire defense, rainwater harvesting, holistic waste management, and include a farm design that can support the needs of the local community. These permaculture design principles are not a new concept. They are the same principles that many indigenous peoples have been using for thousands of years and have continued to support their communities to this day, which we the Leaf of Life team saw firsthand in the Maya biosphere in Central America, where holistic land management provides everything the community needs. There is no reason why these ancient principles cannot easily be integrated with new technologies to suit our modern way of life. This channel, Leaf of Life, aims to inspire positive action through informative videos. Behind the scenes, we have also been creating designs for what a sustainable neighborhood could look like. We are very passionate about envisioning a sustainable future that can be accessible to anyone, to help protect the natural environment and increase biodiversity, growing local sustainable food systems and managing the landscape in a holistic way. If you're interested in the work we do, then make sure to check out our links in the description.